I'd like to call the June 2nd, 2021 Board of Selectmen's meeting to order at 6.30, and I need to read the preamble for COVID-19 emergency. Good evening, and welcome to the June 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen. Due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically. However, the board has jointly decided to proceed with a hybrid meeting format allowing for members of the public and board to attend and participate in the meeting in person or virtually. All members of the board are in person. Votes taken during the meeting will be via roll call vote for all members. In accordance with emergency order 12, for members of the public, this is to confirm that we are present. Providing public assets access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possible by video or other electronic means through GoToMeeting. All members of the public and the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through GoToMeeting platform and the public has access to contemporarily listen and if necessary necessary participate in this meeting through dialing the following phone number 1-646-749-3122 followed by the audio access code 447-550-261 or by video following the directions on the town of Wolfboro website posted on the home page under virtual town meeting login information page. Providing public notice of the necess necessary information for accessing the meeting, we previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting in person or using GoToMeeting and in and instructions are provided on the town of Wolfboro website at wolfboronh.us on the virtual town meeting login information page, providing a me mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or computer, please immediately call 603-387-8259 or email townmanager at Wolfboro nh.us. In the event that the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at, a, at that time. All bar, board members are participating tonight in the Great Hall. Um, I'll do a roll call. Um, Brian? Here. Luke? Present. Linda's here. Dave? Here. And Brad? Here. Alrighty. Uh, first item, um, Mr. Town Manager, do we have a need for a non-public session? Uh, Madam Chairperson, we do under RSA 91A, colon 3, Roman numeral 2, lowercase e, pending litigation. Okay. The next item on the agenda, the May 19th, 2021 minutes. Does anybody have any corrections or additions? Hearing none, can I have a motion to accept as written? So move. Second. Okay, I had a motion by Brad, a second by uh, Dave Senecal. Brad? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda's yes. Luke? Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay. The next um, item on the agenda is public hearing. Uh, the first public hearing is the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to hold a public hearing on Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in the Great Hall of the Wolfboro Town Hall at 9 Union Street and virtually to consider increasing the building permit fee ske schedule either 25, 50, or 75 from current rates. 
Mr. Town Manager, you want to take this, or are you going to give it to one of your staff? Yeah, I'll, I'll initiate the conversation. Um, so you should have in your packet uh, an outline of the um, recommendation for fee increases. Um, there's been a lengthy discussion um, amongst the staff and uh, Selectman Deshaies um, regarding the formula being used. Um, and I, I think at this point it would be prudent to place on hold um, the increase in those particular uh, permit fees so that we can do it once um, after we've had a, a greater amount of time to evaluate those formulas. However, with that said, um, many of the other permits, um, such as electrical, plumbing, demolition, gas, uh, swimming pool, fences, stoves, and reinspections, um, probably should be revisited at this time, um, whether it's a 0%, 25%, 50%, or 75% increase. Um, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you may have and also work with uh, Tavis and Steve on um, any questions that you may have. Thank you. I'll open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak to this public hearing? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, board members, I did receive one letter, or we received one letter from a uh, resident who would like uh, us to reduce the uh, permit fees to zero. Uh, the rationale is economic fairness and incentive for administration efficiency. Um, that <clears throat> it, it, it is a service to the town who is the primary beneficiary because it ensures that um, the building are, are properly um, meet the code um, and that the town should bear the cost and allocation allocated out to all homeowners through the property tax and all building permits result in an increase to the tax rate. The, cre the key reason for relying on property tax rather, on, rather than building permit revenue for funding code enforcement is that it provides an incentive to the town and the code officer for providing this service on the most administratively effective, cost-efficient basis. And I just took key sentences, and I would like this attached to the minutes for this public hearing. Board members, um, anybody have any comments? We're being asked to table the formula based on square footage and um, still maintain the individual permit fees, like for plumb, plumbing, electricity, et cetera. Anybody have a comment? Dave. Yeah, from what, what I understand, Jim, what you said, was it the building permit fees to be tabled, but the rest of the fees to increase to what they what they have on their sheet? Yeah, so because of the amount of question that's being uh, raised um, and the amount of feedback that I'm receiving about the two different formulas, um, we I feel that we should wait as opposed to go forward with one formula right now, then come back and visit it in six months and change that formula again. Um, however, we still have got an issue with the um, demolition, electric, plumbing, gas, uh, swimming pool, above ground, in ground fences, wood stoves, uh, first and second reinspections that have not been adjusted since 2007. And the sheet shows the percentage um, based on a, the current fees, 25, 50, and 75 percent increases. Does anybody else have any questions for the town manager on this? Yeah, I get, yep. I get Go ahead, um, On the permit fees for buildings, I think it was proposed that they all be at so much a square foot. 
In other words, for a building of, say, 2,000 square feet, it's time so much per square foot. Is that the way I understand it? So, again, there are... Not there are value, not value, but square foot. Yes, square footage. And the, the two formulas are based on square footage. They're just different formulas and how you get to those two different um, yeah. equations. The staff has put together um, a spreadsheet to um, be able to calculate that going forward as to if we do it on this formula, it's going to look like that, and it'll auto-calculate, so we can look at that um, over the next few months to see what those increases are. Um, we, we have a variable in the, the um, formula that Selectman Deshaies has brought forward, and we just don't know what that um, factor number should be at this point. Um, the higher the factor number, the lower the permit fee, the lower the factor the higher the permit fee, and we haven't found where that right spot at this point is. Would you yeah. agree with that, Brian? Yeah. Um, and what we're trying to do, or what my proposal is, is that um, it makes it so the more complex inspections, the ones where he has to review much larger plans for a seven or 8,000 square foot house compared to a 1,000 square foot house, where he has more man hours into it, where he has to look at six, seven, eight, nine bathrooms, that um, he gets reimbursed for those inspections at a, at a rate that's proper for the amount of work he has to put into it. And by using our current method, or the method that they came and, and brought to us, it doesn't escalate the inspection cost proportionally to how much time and effort he puts into it. So we need, in my opinion, a formula that, that goes on a curve, and there are many ways to do that. We can do it just by square footage and, and other ways, but we need something that takes care of his time involved in his inspections. Anybody else have a comment? Luke. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's important also to mention, you know, one, you know, thank you to Steve and, and Tavis for being so proactive in bringing this to the board's attention. Uh, you know, these fees have been in place for a long time, and uh, I know there's some apprehension out there in the building community, community that I've heard, you know, where people are saying this is just one more tax, you know, lumber prices are through the roof. Well. In a lot of ways, this is, this, is, this is bringing things more in line with many other towns, and it's actually making it more equitable and fair across the board, and I think that's, that's my goal. So, you know, I, I think studying these uh, is great. I think we should have a time certain that, you know, in, whether it be, yep. you know, six months, that we come back and we, we, we deal with this and we get it done. Uh, the, 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 uh, Bri uh, Stephen and, and Tavis have put a, you know, a lot of time into this, and Brian as well, and uh, all really good thoughts and uh, exactly what you'd want to see from your employees in the town to be bringing this to the board. So, you know, I want to see this get done. Um, if, if I could, when Tavis, uh, Steve, myself, and Brian met, um, we made it pretty much an agreement at that point that we would visit this, revisit this in January of 2022. Um, once we have some data to be able to run through um, the formulas and be able to make a decision at that point as to, look, this is the formula we should be using and this is why. And we can have a, a little bit more time to digest which formula is the best yeah. and be able to present that to the community in a manner that makes sense and that we all thoroughly understand. Yep. I think, you know, just to follow up on that too, I think we got to make it clear to the community because I think there is some confusion that this is not the board or the town trying to, to get more money out of people trying to build a house. This is, this is bringing things in line, but it's also, you know, if, if for instance, you go with Brian's formula, you know, uh, it could be reducing the, the cost for people that are building smaller homes that are bringing families into this town. Uh, and we all know we have a problem in Wolfboro with affordable housing. And I think this, the, these two formulas could bring, could bring those things in line. And those that are, you know, building these, you know, uh, larger houses, 
uh, could bring also bring the, the value of how long it takes to actually do the inspections in some of these homes more in line with the surrounding communities. So I think there's a lot of value here. We, we also discussed heavily the fact that we really need to have a minimum and a maximum um, to, to cap it on each end. Um, we, we felt that, that that was a reasonable approach. I am. Um, looked at what Brian did, and I did some um, other uh, calculations, one by changing the price per square foot, which helped me get um, a bell curve. I also looked at that fixed number in the formula that, that they brought forward. One was 250 and 350, and so I went down by the size of the house and and change that, it, it also produced the curve. So I agree there are many ways that we can calculate this. I think it makes sense uh, to go back to the drawing board and, and compare these. Um, I think that we need to make sure that this gets posted on the website, that it's on the home page so the builders and everybody can look at it prior to us having a meeting on it. Um, and I believe, and, and maybe Stephen Tavis can see if I'm right, I think it's uh, RSA 155.9 that is a state statute that says that we are able to um, raise uh, these fees and that's what we're, we are capable of doing and then have that as rev revenue to um, the town. So, Steve. Tavis. <laughs> Steve's over there. He's over there. Okay. So the, the principal reason this was brought to the selectmen's attention is based on that very statute that allows the town to recoup the cost of the services provided. It has become very difficult for Steve and I to balance any version of the algorithm without setting a minimum and a maximum. I'll get to that in a minute. And be able to justify ourselves underneath the statute. By going by across the board square footage, you're able to say, this is what the budget committee and town meeting allocated for salaries, this is what it allocated for the full budget, and you can break that down and come up with an estimation of what the cost per square foot needs to be. Where it becomes very tricky with the algorithm is that it is very fair to the smaller home but very unfair or equal to the larger home. And whether we run that factor at a 10 factor or a five factor, it, very, it becomes very clear that the town is funding its services on the back of the larger homes. I don't want to say the wealthy, but the term Robin Hood came up at the last meeting. So it becomes very disproportionate to the wealthy subsidizing <laughs> the, the larger homes subsidizing the smaller homes, which I don't think is the intent of the statute, and that's where I have concerns with it personally. So there are ways to set minimums and maximums. So we know that every single family home requires at least 10 inspections. That's if every inspection is done independent of any other, there are 10 inspections. The values that were created and presented to you originally contemplated up to 20 inspections. We've played with the square footage cost to say, here's a fully loaded cost for the administrative cost for the administrative assistant, my time in the code office, building inspector's time for 10 inspections, and then building inspector only for the additional 10 inspections based on salary, take gross salary divided by 2080 plus the benefits and all of that fun stuff. So it becomes very easy to come up with the value that way. So what happens if it's a slow building year? Yes, general taxation has to make up the difference in that budget. What happens in a built, you know, a boom year, if you will, the town might make more. And I guess my concern is the intent was not to go from general taxation subsidizing all of the building permits as the current paradigm is and as the letter from the public suggested, but flipping it completely on its ear does not work either. And I, you know, I'm not an attorney, I don't play one on TV, but the statute doesn't say the larger homes should be subsidizing the smaller homes. So the, the simple goal here is for the, the whole reason, again, this was brought here, is for the selectmen to consider raising the building permit fees 
to cover the cost of the services provided. And I guess that is a question that the, that the board is going to need to decide on, whether we want these fees to cover the full yeah. uh, code it's office budget. And, and I, we haven't had a discussion on that, and that's something we should decide. Um, and and I, think, I think what triggered the board was that the fees for a small house doubled and the fees for the larger house did not, and figuring that, that the increases that were being proposed put more of a burden on the smaller as the sheets that you provided us. Yeah. So I think that's what triggered us to take a look at other and trying to make sure that we have it more spread out. We're going back to try to figure out which is the best formula. Correct. Um, yeah. But I'm not sure this board wants to, to um, fund the full budget, and I will try to see where we get some direction on and, that. And the only response I would have to that, and I can have Steve come speak to this, because he does th literally the inspections. I don't know if twice the square footage begets twice the inspections. I we, don't know if there's a direct correlation there. No. But even, even if the board were able to get to a spot where we could cover the known costs, then general taxation would only be covering the bill for cost plus, if you will. I think that's a decision yeah. we're going to have to bat around, you know, um, <clears throat> Brian. Yeah, um, when I created a curve, and you can create a curve at any degree, um, what I attempted to do, and then I created a different curve, and then Linda created a different curve. But I tried to make it so that the cost of the permit is equivalent for a large house or a small house based on the construction budget, because that's the most important thing. If somebody's spending a million dollars, they should be paying the same percentage for their construction same, same permit right. as someone who's building a $300,000 house. So that's the, that's the important thing. Um, and um, based on the 18 last permits that were given out, using are the formulas that were provided to us by Steve. Small houses were going to have a 51% increase in their permit fees, and large houses a 24% increase in their permit fees. Again, so that means that the construction cost compared to the permit fee was not in line. And we can all get to the same place. This is, e this is easy. We can all put our heads together. We can all create a set of permits that helps equalize your budget so that you, so that you cover the costs that um, makes it so that the taxpayers of Wolfboro don't have to subsidize building permits and makes it so that everybody building a house pays the same amount based on their construction costs for their permit. It's, it's conceivable. There is a large generally disparity between construction costs and square footage. It all depends on what you finish the house with, so there has to be something consistent between those. Um, the other element of that that becomes, you know, regardless of the cost of construction or the square footage of construction, the first 10 inspections are a given. So being able to get to that point, and I'm, I guess I'm a little lost because there was a point when we had all agreed that there would be a discussion whether it be 25, 50, or 75% and then run the system in parallel to see what fees would have been gathered under a different formula, and whether that was the algorithm at 10 or algorithm at 5 or algorithm at 3.5, whatever happened, that happened to be, there would be a way to then decide what the ultimate solution would be. I think when we uh, set up this uh, public hearing, there was none of that. We were at that point looking at the 20, 50, 75, which is what this hearing is about. And I hear the town manager saying, what you and Brian were all talking about is something we need to spend some time hashing out and coming for the best formula forward um, that makes the most sense for the taxpayer and, and the uh, person doing the construction. Agreed. So, and at this point, all I'm going to do is end by conceding that probably the worst thing Steve and I could have put in front of the select board was a straight percentage, because that was an average across all of them. So it might be electric goes up 51 percent, general construction goes up 22 and a half percent, et cetera. It's just where the numbers worked out, and that's where that percentage came from. But we're happy to provide any information the board's looking for. Okay. So. 
Is there any more? I, I think just the, the thing to remember, too, is that we have time, and that's the, that's the one thing we have right now, and we're going to get there. Uh, we're going to get there, but we're going to get there, you know, in a way that is meaningful. We can, we can represent it to the public, uh, you know, when we go out there and meet with people so that we have a meaningful, you know, response when people say, hey, why did you increase building permit fees by, you know, 50 percent? And I can say, well, this, this, and this. And I think we're all on the same page. It's a matter of, you know, looking at these numbers for the next, you know, six months, and we're going to be there. And, you know, you're going to be, the department's going to be more in line with what Stephen wants. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm not against raising the building fees. I just, it's how we do it. And I, and I think that you will get support out of the, the board. I guess the first thing I need is a motion um, on whether we want to table, and I'm going to call it the building permit fee main formula, which is what I, um, is what I'll, I hear Jim. Uh, I'll second that. And Dave. So Linda made the motion. It's Dave, just on the building permit fee. Just the, just the building permit fee. Dave, yeah. second. Is there any further discussion on this? Hearing none. Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Linda's yes? Yes. Dave, yes? Yes. Okay. That, that motion uh, passed. Now the next uh, item that Jim would like us to look at and decide whether we want to raise the individual fees, and we were given a I can put that on the screen. Would you? That would be great. I was going to ask that. Let's see if we can get that up. And these are the individual fees. And we also have the proposal at 25%, 50%, or 75%. No. And that chart, do we have it up yet? Almost. Okay. Okay, uh, I understand that it might be a little bit hard to read on the big screen. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> it's a little hard for me to read without my glasses. Um, the demolition um, fees currently are $25. The proposed increase to 25% would bring it to 31. Uh, 50 would be 38. Uh, 75 would be bringing it to 40. We went down through all of these. The only thing that we didn't change, and this was based on recommendation from the board to be consistent with the master plan, there was no change to the alternative energy. We, we kept that at $35 across the board as requested by the board. Um, but this, this takes all of the fees, brings them um, up. The other thing it does is it takes the reinspection, brings them from 35 um, for the first and second reinspections, um, it takes the first reinspection to a $50 fee and the second reinspection to a $100 fee. Um, I can try to answer any questions that you may have or Tavis may be able to. Brian. I'm just wondering if Tavis wants more time to revisit these because he said that he might want to adjust some of the numbers and have some go up more, some go up less. So is it something that he wants more time that he can look at because he now sees that it's a little bit different than he anticipated? I guess the easiest answer to this is I don't know what this accomplishes um, in terms of a budgetary response. There are some demolition permits that would not require more than one inspection. It's either up or it isn't. Um, some electrical permits may require more than one inspection. I don't have the loaded cost of the code enforcement officer in my head, um, but both the 25 and 50 percent seem light from covering the time involved with one inspection. Um, so I think the only appropriate response to this is I don't know um, which of these are most appropriate without being able to figure out how many inspections are related to a, a, an above ground pool versus an in ground pool because um, typically for example with an in ground pool if you came in and simply got an in ground pool you would also have 
the electrical inspection included with that permit. So now we have one $175 permit fee for an in-ground pool that might have three inspections. So, so are you saying you'd like to take these back also? I, I, think it needs, I think it needs more time to see how these proposed individual expenditures play out in the budgetary scheme with regard to the statute, yes. Okay, so that's your recommendation. Um, any other board members have any questions or concern? Okay, then I need a motion to um, not move forward with any of the building permit fees changes at this time. So moved. Okay, that's Luke. Second. Luke. Brian, second. Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Linda's yes. Dave? Yes. Brad? Yes. Okay. The last question I have here is, should we give a con some kind of a direction to the um, code officer and planning um, director on whether we want the full budget for the code department um, used to bring the fees up to cover that full amount? What's done customarily by other towns? Dave. In most towns, the permit fees do not cover the expenses of a department. Do they, are they loaded, like, and so they're not loaded, they don't cover all the no. retirement benefits and in, anything like that? No. Not to my knowledge, and I've been around a lot of these. I know most towns charge fees. Most towns have part-time people and not full-time. Those towns may have a better uh, cover, if you will, of expenses. But most towns that have full-time full -time people with benefits and everything, they don't cover expenses with permit fees. And, and it's, a, it's a budget item yep. that's in there. If you don't want, um, all you're doing is offsetting uh, with revenues, the expense of that department on the revenue side of your budget. It's the only thing you're doing. I think so. The, uh, it, and, and every town is different yep. as far as what they, how much is covered. I think um, the towns around the lake are a little bit different too because in our towns we build smaller homes and we build a lot of very, very big homes. Um, when I was talking to the code enforcement, officer and the building inspector in Portsmouth, he said he doesn't remember the last time a building went up in his city that was under a million dollars. So he has only more expensive projects, so they do it one way. We do have a unique situation here because we do build houses that are 960 square feet and 8,000 square feet. So it, it is a tricky situation. Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I have no trouble covering the salaries I start having problems when we're also trying to cover the benefit package related yeah, to that correct. salary. Cool. You know, the other part, uh, you know, we pay for it in every other department. It's part of what the uh, benefits the town provides. So I would like to see us cover as much of the other costs as we can, but I, I don't think I want to cover the, the no. health insurance and We've, benefit packet. Correct. We've been through this before over the years, and it never, never covers. I mean, where I am, in my fees, I, I can cover my expenses and the zoning office's expenses. That's very unusual, mm -hmm. quite unusual. And we do everything by the square foot. There's no values, because if you start taking values into account, that curve's going to go up and down and up and down and all over the place. But if you know as a contractor that you've got a 10,000 square foot building and it's 35 cents a square foot, that's what you're gonna pay. You know that ahead of time. You can build that into your proposals. But if somebody says, well, it's a 10,000 square foot building and if you guys have been around products that are produced, the inside of a building can be a whole lot different in a 10,000 square well, foot building, who depends on who the contractor is and what kind of cabinets they put in, what kind of trim, what kind of windows, 
all those things add up to value. Now, m most people in the business, most code officials, don't know sometimes what's going into that building. Mm -hmm. They know the square footages. They know the volume, if you want to. But there's a heck of a difference between a Brasco window and a Marvin window. And our, cu our, our current formula that we use is based just on square footage. That's right. But the new ones that were brought to us were based on square footage using a different front end loaded number and a different cost per square foot in the equation. So it actually skewed the numbers so that smaller houses went up more and larger houses no. went up less. Yeah. So I think we, we just, just got to get the right formula. Yeah, I, they need more time. Yeah, we, we know that needs more time. I'm just trying to get direction for the um, planner and the code officer. I don't want them going down and when the board is, if it does not want to support paying for it all. Uh, Brad. Yeah, and I agree. I think we need some more time to go through this. And I think one of the other important things to let the public know is that this isn't being looked at as a way of increasing a budget at all. This is just to a different way to, you know, bring some revenue into the current budget and stuff like that. We're not looking to get an increase in the uh, the the, uh, the codes uh, building inspector budget at all here. So. Um, I think we've said that before, but I just want to make sure the public does understand that, that, that this is just a looking at another mechanism to help, you know, bring some, some revenue into the town to offset some of the costs that's associated with that part of the job. So, so are you, do you want to pay for the full budget or? Do oh, no, no, I don't think I want to pay for the full budget. I think no. we want to get to a spot where we, we all agree we're comfortable with the, with the amount that we are covering in there. I don't necessarily, you know, probably at least take the salary part. Um, I'm not looking to get all the benefit packages you said covered or anything. You're not. I'm gonna find a range in there with putting a minimum and a max in there too will help in that regard too, that we don't, if we get flooded with a lot of all of a sudden, uh, like we get 10 real large homes get built on the lake here. And uh, you know, we might have you know, a huge amount of money coming in. We don't wanna, we're not looking to do that either, so. Well, yeah. Do you have a comment? I think, you know, the only thing we got to balance here is, and I, I think we need to make the public aware that, you know, this is, you know, ultimately we want people to come here and build in Wolfboro and we want it to be a vibrant building community. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a huge resource uh, and buildings up right now. So we don't want to have this be seen as a tax. All right, so John, John, before you walked in, we tabled the, the per increase in permit fees. Just I saw you walk in as we we're doing that, so I thought you should know. And we're going to look at it over the next, you know, six months and revisit it in January. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, and I also and I also know and I've talked to, to you know to Tavis and Stephen. I, I know how much work they're putting it. How much work Stephen's putting into. With, with the current building situation, how much work he's putting into being out there and, and, and doing inspections, and I, there's 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 there, you know there's there's some issues there, and they need to, you know, I think we need to bring things in line. It's uh, but it shouldn't be looked at as a tax, and it, it it definitely it needs to be fine tuned. I mean that's what we're hearing, that's what I hear, that's what I saw on public forums out in the community, and we need to make sure this is presented well and that people are heard. Do you want to have the, are you, we're trying to give them oh, yes. a direction on whether you were looking to have them cover the full budget? No. no. Okay, so we're, you know, I look at the, the first sheet that you gave us where you had their salaries and the revenue and we were in good shape and then we got it with all the benefits and we'd have to really increase them. And I don't think that's where, I don't want to go there. And so if you take out the benefits, that give it to us that way and look at different ways to get it. Is is everybody agreed consensus that that's yes. the direction? That's just a direction that we're, we'd like to go okay. in. Just just for clarification, is this the codes only budget that we're talking about? That was is my feeling. Not adding your time in. Well, I only ask that because my assistant is 40% covered out of planning and 60% out of building. So She's if we're just looking at codes only, that's just the direction I need yes, to move forward. That, her okay. percentage in codes, yes. That's what I, I think it should be. Absolutely. Okay. Anybody have any different, any direction on that? 
So we're saying everything that's related to codes. Yeah. We, in the last formula he gave us is 20% of his time also in the calculation. And so I, I'm saying what I think is we should look at the code officer and his assistant as part of that code budget, and the rest of it is in the planning department. People can disagree with me if they... I just need to know what number Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I got consensus yeah. for you, but that we are on different... Yeah. Is, it, is there anybody yeah, no, who has an issue with that? Any man hours spent on permits should be accounted for. Well, that would mean that Tavis's 20% would be figured into that time. I mean, if that's, if he, I think that. Tavis, is, is your 20% figured into the time? I mean, do you spend 20% of your time working on permit fees? Not on permit fees, no, but on permits, yes. On permits. Yes. Well, need to come to some kind of direction, Brad? Yeah, I'd, I'd include that 20% of Tavis's time into that, the okay. salary part. Okay. Again, I don't think you're ever going to cover all the expenses for these departments. It's just like highway. I mean, how are you going to try to cover them? Well, we don't have to necessarily cover them, but at least oh, he has oh, a... Oh, 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 please let me finish. So I don't see how, if they want to figure that 20% in and come back with that number, that's fine. But there's no way that that department's, unless they increase the fees substantially, and I mean up in the 75% range, that they're going to ever cover that department with permit. It's just not going to happen. Agreed. Not going to happen. It doesn't happen in other towns. Very few. Very, very few towns. And you can go around the lake, any of them, talk to Jack Deva, which I think you've done, mm -hmm. talk to uh, any of the guys, uh, you know, in Guilford, you know, right around the lake. Moultonboro. Steve's got a huge uh, department up there as far as permitting, but he's not covering his expenses. Oh, I would, I would suggest that many New Hampshire towns are not, but the statute no, not. allows. And I don't the, disagree. Really, the question is how much of the cost of service is to be borne by the general taxation. I don't disagree. The, the fees should the be changed. Fees, and that to me is the question for the board. And, and that's we'll what come I'm, back with other examples. Yeah, I'm trying to get some yeah. more definition Understood. for you. Uh, Luke, where are you? Do you want it to include the planning fees, or do you want it just the I, I'm fine with it, uh, bringing them, a, uh, them bringing us a number that includes the, the planning fees with it, I'd, and then obviously it'll come back to us, and you know we'll ultimately make the decision. But I think, the, I think that percentage should be, I personally feel like it should be included for us to look at, and then at that point we can decide where we you go got, with You this. got the consensus of the board that that's what they want. Yeah. Okay. The unloaded fee, understood. The loaded fee. Oh, the unloaded, unloaded fee, fee, but all no the benefits. Yes, yes. Right. Be yeah. Because we don't have to try and cover all the expenses for their salaries, but it's nice to see what the expenses are, what our permit fees are going to be, how much of it we are covering, how much is going to be um, paid for by the, by, you know, the general taxes, and so that we know where we sit. And it is understood, and, and Mr. Devers did tell me, and um, I talked to other code enforcement officers, and most in the state don't cover their expenses. They're allowed to, but they don't, because they don't want to have their expenses, you know, exorbitant. But it is good to just see where we are and, and where we will be. Do you have enough direction from the board now? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, long discussion. Okay. Uh, well, I, let me get consensus of the board. If they said, I will. Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Dave? Yes. Brad? Yes. I'm yes. Yes. <laughs> My name's John Rock, and I am a home builder in town here and have been for 25 years. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out this evening, too, is that the code enforcement gentleman, he also does, you know, assist with planning, um, as does Terry, as well as zoning enforcement and a whole host of other things as well. So I don't know that even 100% of his salary should be attributed towards the cost of um, the building department solely. 
I also think that uh, on the expense side, having experienced, you know, hosts of permits for year after year, it seems as though something could be done to also streamline the efficiency of getting the permits, which might reduce the burden to the building department of administrating them as a whole. I recently got a permit in the city of Rochester for a large warehouse building, it's actually 150,000 square feet, and that, and I'm not being facetious, but it was a whole lot easier than it is getting a building permit in the town of Wolfboro for a single family home. They have it all online. It goes department to department. If they have a question, it comes up to you. You can answer it online. Um, they'll respond and just pass it to the next department if there's any issue whatsoever. It's seemingly now, and for a number of years, it takes an extraordinarily long time to get the permits themselves. And I'm kind of at a loss, whereas they go, I'm sure there's a good reason for it, you know, to the tax department, to the electric department, so on and so forth, but I've not once in 25 years been refused a building permit from one of those issues, from an issue from one of those departments. And there's times, especially after 2008, which I was delinquent in, my electric bill in my taxes and that too and the permit was still given so this is you know probably close to 80 permits and not one has been refused from one of those departments so I'm, I'm asking why you know that there has to be some cost savings in the administrative portion of this as well thank you thank you do we wait I, I gotta get consensus <laughs> you know I Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Yes. Dave? Yes. Yes. And just make sure you say, stay, state your name for the record. My name is Martina Hanna. I'm the sales director for Rook Fine Home Building. Um, in the same fashion that you're looking at this from a financial point of view, I am too. Uh, last year, I sold more new construction than any other agent in the Lakes region, uh, in which case predominantly the majority of them were in Wolfboro. So we, cons we impacted and we uh, added substantially to the town. Um, in the last number of weeks I've had, I've had one permit that's taken significantly longer that I've already billed out, I've already got an estimate and I've got a contract signed for it. So one of my questions is, is, that, is this new tax? impacted today is that oh, the, the, sorry the new permit fee we have ta tabled and are not taking any action on any of the amounts that were noticed in this public hearing we're going to go back and look at formulas and we're going to look at it and come up with changes in january 2022 that's that's good to know and um, because obviously now we all know that whilst construction is booming, it is starting to slow down, and that's predominantly forced by uh, material costs. So I would, the last thing I would want for the town, because you lose out in revenue too, we lose out in revenue, our subcontractors will, and we provide a lot of employment in, in the region too. So the last thing I would want is that for that to prohibit us moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, I think we're ready to move on. I'll open up the next public hearing. It's a temporary event permit. The Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit for All Saints Church to hold the 60th annual All Saints Church Summer Fair on July 17, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. State your name for the record. I'm Carolyn Sunquist on behalf of All Saints Church. Um, about two weeks ago, the vestry decided to move forward with our 60th annual summer fair. Um, starting a little bit later than usual, uh, we decided that we wouldn't go forward until we had the, the tents in place and uh, some volunteers were willing to do it. So here we are looking for permission to go forward with our 60th annual fair. Thank you. you I'll open questions? up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak to this? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board members, do you have any questions or concerns? 
I guess we've seen this for 60 years. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> same old, same old. I'll move to issue a temporary event permit to All Saints Church to host the 60th annual All Saints Church Summer Fair on July 17, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for COVID-19 guidelines set by All Saints Church. Second. Brad, second. Board members, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, Brad? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda's, yes. Luke? Yes. Brian? Yes. You have your permit. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll open up the next temporary, of, uh, the next hearing is the Wolf Board Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit to perform it, stage company to use Kate Park and community bandstand for a scenic performance on June 6, 2021 from noon to 6 p.m. State your name for the record. Hi, I'm Wendy Platch, president of Perform It Stage Company. I'm here with one of our directors and one of the leads in this performance, should we be allowed to have it. Um, our show back in 2020 had to be canceled due to COVID. We were just one, two weeks out of production. Um, since then, some of our seniors have graduated, but we would like to have a smaller version of that show to honor them and to honor some of the local businesses who always run advertisements in our playbill. So much smaller performance. We will not have set, we will not have lights. You all may have seen what we've done in this <laughs> venue. Um, this will just be the five to 10 students acting um, on their own, al fresco. Okay. Thank you. I'll open up the public hearing. Is there anybody who would like to speak to this permit? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Um, board members, do you have any questions? question I have, Linda, is, and I know this is coming right up here on the, on the, on the 6th here, but on doing the event on the 6th, but the insurance says that the policy effect is from 6-7 to 6-8. I think that might just be a, I don't know, just a typo down there. It's, you know, I don't know, obviously right down here, uh, at Avery Insurance, if you could just, in my opinion, if they just got a corrected version to us at some point, I'm yeah, fine just so we're it, covered. But, Yes. just to make it all the dates all match yes and the time of our event um, is from two to four but we allowed some time yeah. at the beginning to set up and, and clean up and clean up yeah. um, it's not a 24-hour event but i will have those dates corrected yep. okay any other comments from the board hearing none can i have a motion I'll make a motion to uh, issue a temporary event permit to perform it, stage company, to use Kate Park and Community Bandstand for scene performances on June 6, 2021, from noon to 6 p.m. Second. Okay, I had a motion by Brad, seconded by Dave. Um, Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Linda? Yes. Dave? Yes. Brad? Yes. Okay, you have your permit and uh, be glad to see you down performing down at Cape Park. Thank you, and please come. Uh, I'll try to get there. <laughs> I've enjoyed the ones I've gone to. Uh, next item on the agenda is public input, three minutes per person, not to exceed 15 minutes. Is there anybody who would like to give us public input at this time? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to the bulk vote. Um, on the bulk vote, there's the we weekly manifest. Uh, first one is $467,176.54. The second one on May 28th was $85,365.40. We have 11 abatements that are being denied and we have one abatement that is being approved. We have one intent to cut, and uh, we have one property tax credit and exemption. Uh, do I have a motion from the board? I move that we uh, approve the bulk vote. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I had the motion by Dave Senecal, seconded by Luke. 
Brad? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda? Yes. Luke? Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay. Next item, item on the agenda, um, appointments. We have Tavis Austin to be um, on the Lakes Region Planning Commission. Term expires July 2022. We have a trustee of the trust fund, Karen Lauren Haskell, alternate member, uh, term March 2024, and a member for the con 23, isn't it? I have 23. I have 24 here. What do you have? I have 24 on the um, agenda. Does anybody? I don't well, on this sheet, it says March of 24. Okay, so I'm going to change that to 23. It must have been a typo on the agenda. Um, uh, and that's Jim Knapp, alternate member. Oh, no, that's uh, uh, Karen yeah. Lawrence Haskell. And that is the alternate for the trustees of trust fund. It's going to be 23. And the same thing with James Knapp, alternate member, expires March 2023. It says 24. 24 now. Well, okay. I thought. I th right, well, I'm that, not sure. Okay, we'll go with 24. Maybe Jim could just double check on those. Well, yeah. Um, and he's an alternate member for the Conservation Commission. <clears throat> Does anybody want to make a motion? Want to make them individually or all? all yeah, why don't you do one and then the next? Yeah, I'll move to appoint uh, Tavis Austin as a member of the Lakes Region Planning Commission for a term to expire July of 2022. Second. Okay, Dave made the motion. Brad seconded. Brad? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda? Yes. Luke? Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay, next one. Yeah, I'll make a motion to appoint Karen Lawrence Haskell as an alternate to the trustee of trust funds for a term to expire March of 2023. Second. Okay, I had Brad make the motion. Dave Senecal seconded. Brad? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda? Yes. Luke? Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay. Got one more. Who wants to make that motion? I'll move to appoint James uh, up as an alternate to the Conservation Commission for a term to expire March of 2024. Second. Dave made the motion. Luke seconded. Brian? Um, Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Linda's yes. Dave? Yes. Brad? Yes. Okay. They're all done. Okay, uh, first item of new business is the um, commercial vehicle landing per permit for the mail boat Winnipesaukee Dive. Winnipesaukee Dive Company is um, submitting that. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? And I don't see anybody here tonight to speak to it. Can I have a motion? I'll move to approve a commercial vessel landing permit to dive one for for 2021, contingent upon receiving the updated insurance certificate. This is for the mail boat. Okay, and I'll second that. Um, Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Linda's yes. Dave? Yes. Brad? Yes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Granite Man Triathlon, and I believe Christine is online. Yes, thank you, Linda. Um, this, I was bringing this forth to the selectmen today because we had a task force created at the beginning of the early spring just to um, decide what we were doing with COVID-related um, events. Uh, this actually is not kind of related to COVID. So the Granite Man Triathlon, it was going to be our 39th last year. Um, we were going to just have the 39th this year. But we had an upgrade to Cary Beach, uh, which is great. It looks fantastic. Uh, but when I went over with Dave Ford to kind of look at the construction of the beach and go through um, what Granite Man would look like, it just doesn't look like we're going to be ready to hold it this year. And to be honest with you, um, 
we're not sure of the future of Granite Man at that beach. Uh, some things that were impacted would be um, just the parking. It has significantly um, decreased in size. Uh, some of the side of the road um, where it connects with the dirt and uh, the fence of the beach and the pavement is soft um, just to help with the drainage, which is great for You've turned your mic off. Okay, sorry. Where did I leave? Where did you, what did you miss? You were talking about the soft shoulders of the, the Yeah, roadway. the soft shoulders. So we're concerned about just having the bike racks there. Um, there's been some, you know, I have kind of talked to quite a few people because it has been a race that's been going on for 38 years. So trying to figure out ways that we could still run it for this um, summer. And we just don't feel like we can do it safely. And um, there's a lot of logistics we have to figure out. So we're saying to hold off for this season so the hydro seeding can come to play and kind of look at the situation. Some thought process is trying to maybe shuttle people in um, and we could do parking at Pop Whalen. Um, but these are some logistics we have to figure out. So we're gonna hold off for a year and come back um, hopefully next year. Does any selectman have any questions for Christine? Nope. All righty. Um, shall does somebody want to make a motion that we cancel the Granite Man Triathlon? Or I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Dave? Any discussion? Hearing none. Brian? Brian? Yes. Luke? Yes. Linda? <laughs> Dave? Yes. Brad. Yes. I did a quick switch on that one. <laughs> uh, next uh, item on the agenda is the Lakes Region Model Railroad Museum update. So uh, I've got a PowerPoint presentation that I'll be putting up on the screen for you to view. Mr. Sims is here to um, give you an update as to where he is on the project and where we are going forward. Um, it's all yours, Mr. Sims. You just tell me when to advance the slide. Thank you, John Sims, and greetings to all of you. Um, there's a short PowerPoint which uh, Jim is going to call up on the screen, so I'm going to ask if you could turn and look at the screen. There we are. I apologize for the inconvenience. But, and some of you are very familiar with this, and uh, some of you may not be, but the goal is to create a state-of-the-art, interactive model railroad and history museum in the center of Wolfboro in the 1872 Boston-made Next. This picture, if you can see it, is circa 1890, and in the top right you see the freight shed. In the bottom left you see the railway station, and you see boxcars parked in front of the freight shed and between the freight shed and the railway station. Next. This is as uh, at the beginning of the project, 2017. You can see the loading dock along the right side. It is uh, slowly deteriorating, and in the summer, it is in the grip of bindweed, which is penetrating throughout. Next. So the project consisted of rehabilitate the building for public use, construct inside a museum space, including office and ADA bathroom, and phase three is then to create the Model Railroad Museum. Next. Um, I'm sorry about the small print. The, uh, what has been done by voters is they approved a warrant article in 2016 uh, to purchase the freight shed with certain conditions. Then the warrant articles in 2017 were to authorize the museum, LRMRM, Lakes Region Model Railroad Museum, to rehab and to set aside $25,000 in capital reserve to match the LCHIP funding for that project. And then to the third item, the second item of the leases that's important is to enter into a lease with the museum. And then there was a further warrant article in 2018 extending the time for completion to the end of 2021. Next. So the funding for phase one, which is the rehabilitation, that estimate to completion is 380. 
we have for it 130 from LCHIP, 95 from the town, and private sources have contributed 155. And we're presently uh, we're projecting to complete at or below budget. Next. This is the first step in dismantling the, uh, the, the we took the loading dock off and you will see the rotted sills and the, uh, the piers that are leaning at all sorts of angles. And so the, this side of the building, which faces Bridge Force Path, was in very poor shape. The, face, the, the side of the building facing the, the railroad avenue was in much better shape. Next. This is a close-up of the condition of the foundation of the building. Next. And this is what the foundation down the center of the building looks like. You can see the piers, and they rest on beams in the ground. And those beams were like 12 inch by 12 inch with the length that you see buried in the ground. So it's no wonder that the water was pooling up behind those because there's no way for it to drain out. And those were been down there a long time and were in pretty great shape when we took them out, but they were very heavy. Next. This is the building raised on its cribbage. Um, we, we raised it about eight feet next. And now you see the, underneath the building with a couple of people at the far end. So you can see we raised it a good eight, nine feet into the air. Next. We straightened the building out. Um, we rebuilt the foundations. We put piers underneath. We redid the cells, we redid the bottoms of the vertical beams coming up and lowered it back down. And this is what it looks like now lowered down. It's more of a rectangular shape than it was before. And that green, green spigot sticking up is the uh, connection to the perimeter drain on this side. There are three of those connections and the idea is to put guttering on the uh, roof of the building and connect them straight into the perimeter drain. So I think that the the water issues under the building are now long since history. We haven't seen any sign of any water uh, since we did it last fall. Next. This is with the sheathing brought down and uh, buttoned up for the winter. Next. So the activities since we began again, which was about two months ago, replaced the asbestos roof with asphalt single, shingles. That's been done. Repair the roof edges and the trim, that's all been done, and repair the damaged rafters. And interestingly enough, the rafters that we repaired went back to the original design. But because the original design rafters were made of Douglas fir 100 years old, and, you, and the, we had to use contemporary Douglas fir, which is a, only half the strength of the old stuff, we had to reinforce them. So uh, they, we've taken them back to where they were, but we had to add additional reinforcement to them. In addition to which, when you're repairing rafters like this, you have to meet current code, and that's what we did. So to do is repair and or replace the siding where indicated, and that's underway. If you've seen the building in the last couple of days, you can see the workers putting the siding on and replacing the, the edge boards and the, the corner boards and so forth. And they should be done by the end of this week. Then we will build the handicap, or then we'll paint the building, and the paint will be the same as the paint on the station. So in spite of the fact that it's white and gray and all sorts of prime colors right now, it will end up looking similar to the railway station. Then we build the handicap ramp, and then we rebuild the loading dock, and at that point, phase one and the LCHIP funded work is complete. Next. This is what phase two and phase three will start to look like. This is a plan view of the building, and at the uh, left-hand end you see the handicap ramp, and the door into the building is at the left side. You will see at the top left inside the building a bathroom, and then an office below. And then to the right you see a box that's been built inside the building containing the museum. Now all of these museum ideas are tentative, subject to change. We have a very active museum definition committee right now that is brainstorming through the various alternatives to get to what we need. But that's a possibility. The, the deck, the loading dock is shown in the, the brown running along the bottom of the building. It doesn't curve around the far side as shown here. So that is, um, has changed since then. Uh, next. 
This is a, a, a further concept of the inside of the building, and you can see train layout, you can see a workstation in the center, and maybe that's where Thomas the train engine is. Um, it may be a, a two layer layout around the outside walls, and we may not have that big bulge coming out, but if we do, that'll be Wolfboro, and that'll be reproduced in some detail. Um, so this is a possible layout. No guarantees, we may end up with something very different, but this is uh, just to give you an idea of what might end up being inside that shed. Next. This is a, a, a conceptual image of looking into the shed from the entrance door. This is done by Russ Chandler, who's done a huge amount of work on this project. And you can see the entrance into the internal room. We think of it as a room inside a room. And uh, the layouts are internally, and you can see display cases outside and, and so forth. But this just gives you an idea of what one might see entering the building. Next. So the concept consists of historical representation of how local economies changed when the railroads arrived and where the rails ran in town. Modeling of local communities in the early 20th century with smartphone accessible backstories and historical commentary. So the idea here is to have some key on the buildings and the locations and the layout which you look at with your smartphone. And because the smartphone recognizes a key or something, it will then take you to the stories that have been prepared that relate the history and, the, and, the, and, and why that building is there and what it was used for. So it'll also allow operators, visitors to operate the railroad, including possibly remotely operating it. So the idea is to have the, the model split into sections so that youngsters can come in, be given a controller, and can run trains. And the computer will keep the trains separate from each other and keep them under relatively modest speeds and so forth so that a youngster can, uh, can get real satisfaction from driving a train around. And then as they get more skilled, they can go to the next level, which means coupling up boxcars and delivering them and uncoupling. And all the way up to where the true hobbyist wants to run the railroad, and there there will be no computer controls, just computer alert uh, warnings, and they'll use human dispatcher. And they will run the railroad as it did on a particular day in, a, in, in history. Um, and upper, including remotely, the thought we have is to, to structure the, the system so that somebody elsewhere can dial in, uh, pay an appropriate fee, and run a train on the, on the layout. So these are concepts that haven't been fleshed out yet, and they, they, they represent the future of museums. We don't want to design a museum that was perfect for 1995. We want to design a museum that people will want to go to in 2025. And it's very difficult defining what those people are going to be and what they want. But we're trying to do that. Another goal is to illustrate and teach STEM to youngsters and youth groups. So specifically teach them how the railroad operates, how the models are put together, how to program, and how to do these sorts of, uh, of, of straightforward things. And hopefully, we will be able to design these programs, these STEM programs, so that they are attractive to everybody. Entertain and educate tourists and other visitors about Wolfborough and other local towns with reference to the other museums. The key here is we will have visitors who come in off the street who want to learn about Wolfborough. We will teach them about Wolfborough. We'll teach them why Wolfborough is laid out the way it is, why there are certain buildings, certain roads in certain places. We will show them that and we will be a reference point, since we're in the center of town, we'll be a reference point to the other museums. And then the last item is to create an extraordinary self-sufficient asset in the center of town with worldwide appeal that supports the development of Wolfboro to the north with year-round appeal. So those are next. I think that's, so maybe one day, uh, this uh, we can expand into a rail car along the side, but that's for another generation. Next. So thank you all for your support. We could not be doing this without you. Thank you very much. That's the end of the.
the little presentation. So, questions? I want to thank you for coming back and giving us an update. I know all of us must have driven by there a number of times and wonder where you were in the whole process. So I really appreciate that. Um, and it looks like we'll have a wonderful building, beautiful building downtown and a, a model railroad to come also, which will... We, we hope so. A couple of things, if I might add. Yep. Um, of the town's $95,000, we have spent about 63000 and there's 32 left. And the accounting process with the town manager seems to be working very well. There are two items that we will need to get to shortly. There is the lease that we have talked about in the past, and we almost brought it to a conclusion, but for some reason didn't. And there's also a stewardship agreement, which needs to be in force. Um, these two things, the stewardship agreement needs to be enforced before we receive the last payment from Elcha. And that is a three-party agreement, which scares me a little bit, but it's basically between Elcha and the museum to say that whatever we do in the museum will not change the historical nature of the building and its relevance and its story. So it means that when we build our internal room, in principle, we can take it out again and return the building back to the, uh, the freight shed. Um, so everything that we do needs to be temporary in a sense. It needs to be removable in principle. For instance, the floor will need to be relayed flat and above the existing floor. The existing floor is quite uneven and, and in poor condition. So we will lay the floor above, but it has to be removable in principle in order to satisfy Elcha. This stewardship agreement lasts for 10 years. After 10 years, we can do anything, you can do anything you want with the building. Uh, but for 10 years, you're inhibited to preserve it as the historical asset that Elchip funded it to be. And we need to negotiate that agreement. It's between the museum and uh, Elchip, but the town needs to be part of the agreement because if the museum were to disappear, the obligation then passes on to the town. So if, uh, I would like to ask if we could resurrect the, the subcommittee of the selectmen if, that we had before to uh, complete the negotiations over the lease, to begin and conclude the negotiations over the, the stewardship agreement. And I've, I've talked to the town manager briefly about that, and if we can get going on that, I'd be very grateful. Yeah, I will work with the board members to get some dates and get back to you in the next week. I would like that very much. Any other questions? Board members, anybody? No. Have any other questions or comments? Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, next item on the agenda, capital project update, Mr. Ford. Hello, Dave Ford, Public Works. We have a one-page uh, report, kind of summarize it in a small. We'll kind of <clears throat> start with the uh, this year's Warren articles uh, from 2021. Warren Article 8, which was the effluent disposal project, this is a study there, but that was authorized at uh, 3.5 million. The project came in uh, much lower than the engineer's estimate, uh, just over two million dollars. Uh, we have a contract with the engineer for 235. And we have uh, other uh, subcontracts with other consultants uh, doing the watershed management plan. Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, this project coming in under budget by a million dollars. Uh, it started construction a few weeks ago, and we are really moving very quickly. Um, we also did close on a loan. I mean, I mean, on purchase of the land, we did buy five acres along the brook, uh, so have a buffer along the 19-mile brook. So right now things are going very, very good. Uh, this project also has qualified for a, uh, a state revolving fund loan, even though we don't need it, but what comes with that is loan forgiveness. So at the end of the project, we'll um, take the loan, pay it off, and then get 15% loan forgiveness. Uh, so that money that'll go back into the sewer fund, and um, we've been talking about trying to use that to uh, start with the long-awaited sewer pump station upgrades, help fund that project. So again, uh, everything's going well there. Any questions regarding the RAB project or um, effluent disposal? Do you have a projected completion date? 
Yeah, we should be done by the uh, end of um, October. Uh, uh, that's the uh, substantial uh, co completion. The substantial completion would be a month later. Uh, the rate they're going right now, they're moving very quickly. Big contractor, it's a DOT contractor, Weaver Brothers, out of Bow, and uh, really uh, top notch. Um, and uh, things are moving very quickly, uh, so it's all, all good. And I wonder whether, when we get to pretty close to completion, whether the board should not go out and look at the site. Because uh, it, it, I know it must look very different than other times. Well, if you see it now, it just it blows me away. You know, after 15 years of worrying about that site, and then all the thought process I went into, and all the pilot testing, we're all coming together now. Uh, so I think we did a pretty good job, but it's very interesting. Anytime anyone wants to go up, I'd be more than happy to take you up there. Uh, it's, it is. Uh, Interesting because when the final product comes, it'll be not something like yeah, it'll be different. It'll be like a state park. It's gonna be so nice when we're done with it. So going well. Uh, the recreation dock repairs. Um, this one's a little confusing. Uh, in 2020, we appropriated a certain amount of money, uh, but uh, as we didn't take the uh, federal grant on that, we we're only able to do one dock. Uh, but we had very confidence in that the project would be supported by a taxpayer. So so we bid the whole project out. Uh, we awarded uh, dock A. And then uh, the rest of the docks uh, were ready to go at town meeting. We did get authorization for the additional 850000 and were able to issue that contract with uh, Chesterfield. Uh, and uh, we were able to complete dock B in the spring. Uh, right now, uh, with, because of this contract, and luckily because of materials, if anyone knows the construction, what's been happening with the supplies and materials, uh, by the commitment we made with Chesterfield, they were able to buy all this equipment, all the materials. So we have it stockpiled up. Uh, on site and locked up right now. And uh, after Labor Day, we'll close down docks uh, C and D and go for demolition and, um, and start building, rebuilding those. And then after um, Columbus Day, we'll close the rest of the docks down and con continue the demolition and reconstruction of all the uh, residential docks and finger docks uh, so that we'll be ready for uh, this time next year for grand opening. And it really will look nice. Uh, it's really uh, quite nice now. It's, it's uh, very, it's kind of like seeing the transition. There's the old docks with splinters, ah, you see the new one coming. And uh, again, it's going to be great. Any questions on the, uh, on the docks? The one thing about the docks too, we do have the interface uh, when the docks come up against the bulkhead and where it hits the parking lot. And so we have the area where uh, we had the uh, plastic wood that had come un undone. So we had to demo that last year. We just kind of did a temporary fix with the concrete um, and we do have to figure that out. So hopefully the uh, dock committee slash parking lot committee uh, can get some resolution to what we're going to do there. So in the fall, my hope would be to not only complete the docks, but try to start that transition into the uh, parking lot and uh, create a nice uh, seating and pedestrian space there. Uh, but obviously there's a lot of questions with regards to the final configuration of the parking lot. But uh, this will happen quickly. Uh, the next few months are going to go by fast. So hopefully we can get some direction on that. Next one was the wastewater treatment plant asset management plan. And this one um, has run into a little bit of a, um, a snafu. Um, we had pre pre presented this as a 30,000 grant with no matching money required from the town. Uh, the state now is requesting that the scope be expanded beyond um, the amount of money we had authorized. Uh, so I'm in discussions with the consultant and the state uh, on that right now. So this project is on hold, and uh, it um, we may have a, we may not be able to accept it because if we uh, if they don't accept our scope of work, then it may have to be put off another year. Uh, town road upgrades uh, this year uh, normally it's in the 900,000. We we took some of the money to fund the Park and High project. Uh, but here at 650, we had put out to bid um, Stoneham Road, and that project was awarded to Integrity. Um, we are cruising right along. The drainage is all done. Uh, gravel is at fine grading. I think we're ready for paving as early as tomorrow, depending on uh, if GMI shows up. Uh, but more than likely, the base paving will be done by Friday, and uh, um, we will then uh, be finishing that up uh, probably by the end of this month. In addition, uh, the town crews are working on East Clark Road and Goodrich Road, uh, and that project is uh, moving along. Uh, it's a little slow because on Thursdays we have to watch out for the, uh, the, uh, uh, the farmer's market, but uh, we're replacing all the drainage and rebuilding um, the road, and that uh, should be done uh, a week from Monday with uh, B 
base paving, and at the same time we do base paving, we're going to overlay all the rest of Clark Road. So we'll base pave East Clark and Goodrich Road, and then we'll overlay all of uh, Clark Road. So that'll finish up that side. The other project that's being done under the road money, which is from last year, is the uh, Bryant Road. And Bryant Road will follow right after Stone Road. So Bryant Road was base paved last year, so this year we're doing the overlay. And uh, that could occur a Friday afternoon, or possibly into Saturday, if the weather's good and, and uh, holds. Um, it's a relatively uh, simpler job because it's just an overlay, and they'll have traffic control to keep everyone in and out of there. So that's all going well. The other thing we are doing also, as we, this is constant, as we're doing this year, is we're also engineering for next year. Uh, so we have a contract with Stantec, and they're preparing plans uh, for the uh, Maplewood, Berrywood subdivision. Uh, we had started at the bottom there at Partridge, and we did a lot of work with regards to drainage. We're going to take that same drainage concept of which we're trying to use the ditches as infiltration trenches and try to um, knock down the peak runoff, get the water back in the ground, and extend those roads all need to be rebuilt. And a few of the dead end streets have to have some water upgrades. So we're working on that engineering now. Uh, the hope is to have that out to bid and have uh, construction numbers by town meeting so that this will be kind of a uh, regular thing that we'll have a good chunk that'll be a bid job and there'll be smaller jobs the town will do so that will hopefully um, continue. Uh, the other big project we did this year, which was a separate Warren article, article number 19, uh, High in Park, and that was funded by the uh, road, sewer, and water budgets. Uh, the contractor was Jake Dawson. Uh, a newer construction company, and uh, but with some good experienced people on staff, and uh, Dave Wickham is their uh, superintendent. We've been working with them. Uh, they've done the tie-in on Park Road, and we've completed the water system on Top Park. Uh, they are now uh, have uh, pressure tested in bacteria, so we'll be tying those services in. Uh, then they're going to finish the drainage on Park and uh, do the base paving. Um, we're also working with the Legion there. We've uh, helped them out a little bit, and they're helping us out with their driveway and access and the temporary staging. Uh, so we've been working with the property owners on Park. Uh, we we'll probably at the end of this month, uh, around June 22nd, we'll be doing the tie-in at High Street, and that'll another be a nighttime work. Uh, so we'll we'll shut the road down at 10 o'clock at night, and uh, we have to uh, put a new sewer manhole in and a new water connection. So it'll be two nighttime digs. Um, and we'll notify the public what he did last time. And again, there'll be uh, delays, but hopefully we'll shut everything down around 10 o'clock and have everything open by 6 in the morning. Uh, we'll try to get the word out so people know. Uh, that then will continue with the water sewer and drainage on High Street. And uh, again, we're looking at that project not being done until uh, after Labor Day. Right now, all those projects are uh, working within our budgets and we still have a contingency. Next one is the uh, article number 20, the Railroad Avenue layout, and it uh, goes with John Sims' project. We, uh, we met out there and, and working in conjunction with this project. I uh, will also tell you what I've seen. They're doing a heck of a job. Brian Lombard, uh, professional, and they brought in really good people. So very impressed uh, what we've seen so far. I think we've assisted with some of the drainage, and uh, the next piece is to do the road layout. So we own most of the land, but there's a strip of land that's owned by the Bean Family Trust, and uh, we are working with them in a, a surveyor. Uh, so we'd have to do the road layout process, which will be something that will start probably July, August. Um, there'll be a site plan that will show you where we're going to put the uh, uh, handicapped parking that will coincide with the ramp that John showed you on that uh, map. So that handicap ramp is kind of facing back into town. We'll have one spot dedicated there. Uh, so that it'll work, and then we'll also have uh, paths to tie into the uh, Bridge Falls pathway, but leaving all that stone dust. Um, and uh, we also are working with uh, the Energy Committee. Today we talked about an electrical vehicle charging station uh, on the back side uh, where the uh, oil tanks used to be. We'll have two spots there, and we're working with the electric department in terms of bringing in the uh, required conduits. We're also working with the Condo Association. Uh, they're kind of our partner here, and they're locked in. Their pavement is old, and they uh, have a, a money to replace their pavement. So we are going to work together. We'll have the same general contractor, but they'll pay for their share, we'll pay for ours. Uh, we happen to be, um, and there is an issue there. They have a funny lot line. Mm. And uh, as far as the road layout, I'd like to propose to the selectmen to kind of straighten that out, straighten out their parking, kind of resolve some of the issues we have. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, make for a better 
condo project, town project. Um, and also the uh, railroad uh, has talked to the condos about bringing their cable connection over, so we're gonna help them with bringing a condo over for them. We're also gonna talk to the people who uh, run the um, ski, boat ski, water skis association. Yep. Yep. Um, again, as we've heard from the last meeting, we have incredible facility and we have some of the great stations and they're thinking potentially at some point maybe a building a gazebo or something and having power and light over there. So we've got to also try to have conduits uh, to make sure that in future date, if they come and it's like a degree, we'll have that ready. So we're, we're going to make sure this is uh, uh, when we redo the road, because the road will not only do the gravel, but the, the paved portion that's there will also be redone and there'll be stormwater treatment uh, in, in much of the areas that we do. Uh, the town plans on doing the work ourselves, although we have an engineer who's going to kind of give us the plan. So I would like to also bring that site plan uh, to show you what we're thinking so you'll have uh, a say on that uh, before we go. But that construction, we don't think will start until after uh, Labor Day. Uh, we will be working with GMI because we've bid them as a paver, so they're going to keep keepers on the schedule so they can, they can base pave it in for us, uh, we hope, by the end of October. Any questions on the railroad app layout and upgrades? Linda, I have one. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, there's talk about potentially having some electric car chargers, some EV chargers, um, in that area on that municipal lot. Would you be able to run an extra conduit for a cable line so that they be, could be hooked up to the internet for pay services? Cable services? Yeah, for pay services. The EV chargers are connected to the internet, and um, that's the way the payment goes is through apps. And to have secure payment, having a cable line to um, the lot behind the train museum that's along B Bridge Falls Path would give us an easy hookup to the um, EV chargers. The, the, the plan so far, the plan before we talked, was to connect to the distribution, the, the, the cable distribution network at the Bayside condos and trench across under their lawn, under Railroad Avenue, connect to the freight shed building and run on the outside to the other end, to the, the, the end closer to the station and enter the building there and then have the, the, uh, the, the modem. Um, but since you raised your possibility, then we could, there are a number of ways to skin this cat, but the, the providing internet c connection to those charging stations should be very straightforward. I think the question is, where do you connect to our connection? Do you connect on the Bridge 4 side path of, uh, side of Railroad Avenue, or do you take a separate connection off from the Bayside condos? And that's, I think, an Atlantic broadband issue, yeah. and I'm happy to bring it up with them or to talk to you about it, but yeah. I don't if, see any difficulty in doing that. If, you, um, if you'd like at any time, if you have a rep from Atlantic that can come out, I will meet with you and we can put a plan together and um, we might be able to help with the trenching expense. Super. Have you talked to Atlantic Broadband yet? No. Okay. I will come, I'll talk to you later about Yeah, that. why don't you, you guys connect That's and I'd talk about it at another time and get it put together. Thank you. Dave? So again, I think the key point here is coordination, and that's what we're doing. So uh, again, we've had good discussions today. They're going to get us the specifications on the necessary amps or what they need, and we're going to get the electrician to help uh, get that set up, as well as the cable, as well as the conduits uh, for future potential at the park. So um, we're trying to touch all the bases and, and keep that project moving. So I think we should be all set. Okay, uh, article number 21 was our sewer pump station engineering. Um, again, just uh, we had put off the sewer pump stations that were identified back in 2007 as uh, both needing to be upgraded. They were originally built in the 1940s. Uh, so we've done the rapid assessment. Uh, now we're getting into uh, the uh, plans for upgrades and design costs. Uh, so right now, uh, my plan is that on Lane Street is a station that's the most needed to be upgraded. And we're coming with uh, plans and cost estimates um, in a design build. Um, project delivery system. Uh, and the reason being is we really uh, would like to sole source the pumps, because we, we use government run pumps. We have uh, five pump stations now. These pumps have been there. They're reliable. Uh, there are suppliers close by Water Industries. So we have a good relationship. 
and by uh, so sourcing and working directly with the factory, we'll save money. At the same time, uh, one of the contractors who work at the RIB site, they're a, um, a sheeting contractor out of Tamworth, Roberts, a family business, so we're going to be working with them in terms of trying to, because we have to put a new wet well, and that's one of the problems. Uh, as you know, that area there is all on fill. Uh, it's the old, it is back bay. Uh, we have borings already done, though. Back in 2008, we had done quite a bit of work, so we have a lot of that engineering. And uh, so we'll be pricing out that uh, excavation in the new wet well, uh, and then uh, looking at uh, uh, selecting a contractor based on qualifications to do the installation for us. Uh, the idea is we'll have a design build package. We won't require any funding from the state so that we could uh, go ahead and, and bring that to town meeting, uh, but ready to go and uh, be built next year. The second station is Mill Street. That building uh, we, is a little bit bigger. Uh, we think we might be able to reuse some of that. Uh, but similarly, uh, the, uh, the facility does need to be 100% replaced. So that could be reused maybe as uh, put some electrical components in, uh, uh, controls. Uh, but that one we're thinking is going to be a little bit more engineering and more traditional. So we've got that estimate. So the, the uh, Lane Street station, we've got it about a half a million. Um, Mill Street will be about 1.5 million, and that's going to be more traditional. But that's when we we also submitted uh, pre-applications with the state revolving fund. Uh, so right now we're not exactly sure how the funding will occur. Every year the state uh, has a program, uh, and we uh, submit our projects uh, for low-cost loans. That's a state revolving loan, and it's a program that's always there. Right now it's 15% loan forgiveness. Uh, they're thinking if the stimulus money comes in, or whatever you call it, at some point that's, that 15% could go as high as 40 to 60%. Uh, so the state has encouraged us to uh, get projects that are much needed. So in, uh, with regards to the Mill Street Station, we've, we've definitely uh, had that in. And uh, last year we had scored and qualified, but because of um, we didn't want to go too fast, we didn't have the construction dollars that we put off, so I think we have a good shot at that one. Um, and we will continue looking at our pump stations because we have put them off. All the other pump stations are going to be needing work also. But right now, so that's moving pretty quickly, and we just signed a purchase order for the second phase of the engineering on that one. Any questions on pump stations? Sec uh, tw Article 26, the Wastewater Treatment Plant Cap Reserve Fund. Uh, last year, we had put that off because we had built up the Cap Reserve Fund, and the projects had slowed down as we were finishing up some major work. Uh, this year, we decided to do a master plan. We had applied for a grant, we didn't get it, but we still felt necessary to look at where we're at now. Uh, back in 2007, uh, the engineer at that time said we needed to build a whole new facility for $14 million. Uh, we were able to um, put that off as we focused on the effluent uh, disposal problem, and we have done minor upgrades, uh, taking advantage of uh, grants and whatnot, and the plant is running oh, great, actually, but the reality is the concrete is still crumbling. Uh, the building is built in the mid-70s, and we are looking at a major upgrade. Uh, again, with the potential uh, funding coming in place, now is the perfect time. If we can get 50 cents on the dollar, now is the time to put the projects we put off for the last 10 years, and maybe looking into the future, the next 10 years, let's bundle them all together. I have submitted a pre-application for $10 million for the uh, upgrades of this facility, and uh, we are working on the master plan uh, which will support, uh, we've done the rapid assessment of all the different facilities in the plant, which ones we can save and which ones we need to restore and which ones we will replace. Uh, so that's ongoing and we'll have that uh, master plan uh, later this summer. Again, uh, the good news here is if we hit the timing right, we can pick up you know, the, the, the money for, uh, with a lot of grant money. The cap reserve fund uh, for uh, the public works vehicles in uh, solid waste. Uh, we had 180,000 appropriated. Uh, that money has not been transferred, but we do have um, uh, purchase orders uh, out for the, uh, for the uh, new HD1 truck and for SW8, uh, one of our trash compactors. Um, we, we maybe push our equipment a little too far. Uh, Trash compactor, 15 years, and wouldn't you know it, this weekend, it broke. It pushed too hard, and, and, and one of the main, uh, where the uh, pist piston holes popped on us. Uh, luckily, we got some really smart guys. Uh, this has been, a, uh, we were waiting for the new compactor coming in. But in the meantime, without the two compactors, we can't handle the amount of trash that comes in on the weekend. So we have to have this back. So uh, Ben and uh, Chris are out there working with Adam, and uh, they, uh, we've got an I-beam to put it in there welding, so we're hopefully that's going to help us get us by 
uh, cheap fix for a couple of months until we get the new compactor in. Uh, there may be some disruption of services uh, over the next weekend, so people be patient as they come up there. Uh, the, um, and again, um, the other truck should be here shortly. Uh, when we do get the HD1, that is kind of the foreman truck, a worker truck. The old HD1 is going to now be handed down to solid waste because they've been short of trucks. So we're not getting rid of it because it still has some hours on it, but not the heavy duty work that the highway gives us. So we're going to keep that one going. Under the building cap reserve fund, I, we haven't uh, had any activity on that, uh, so I don't have much to report regarding that. And that takes us through the 2021 um, new warrant article. So I'll now go backwards unless anyone has any questions on any of this year's stuff. So the big one, Kerry Beach parking lot. If you had an opportunity to go down, uh, if you saw the before and after, oh my God, what have we done here, right? It's, it's uh, to me, it's beautiful. Uh, we've got all the trees in. Uh, we've got a bunch of Liberty Elm trees and, and maple trees. Uh, people ask, why do we do this? Remember, it's about stormwater. This project was identified as uh, contributing pounds of phosphorus to uh, the Winter Harbor. Uh, two years ago, we had a, 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 a cyanobacteria outbreak. Uh, it's a very sensitive water body and everything we can do. So this was a, a big project, a big commitment on the town, and uh, all the stormwater now will uh, comes from the parking lot, uh, goes into drainage, subsurface into a leach field. Uh, along the edge of the road where we used to have water run off from the road directly and, and, and erode, it now goes into a stone trench. We have to be very careful. That stone trench is a treatment system. The sand under the stones so the water gets treated before it goes down and back into the lake. Uh, unfortunately, we have put up no parking signs, and again, we appreciate people uh, that's there for reason, uh, safety reasons, but also because that stone can't support a vehicle. Uh, so be careful. Uh, I know sometimes you just want to go by and take a look. Uh, the parking lot is now open, uh, so if you do want to launch your kayak, you can park in the parking lot to take the kayak down there. We prefer not stopping along the road. Uh, there is a lot of traffic there. It's just not safe. So the fence is there for a reason, and we prefer people not stop there. Uh, but the rest of the facility is great. I think, uh, again, it's, it is going to be limited in numbers because we only have so many parking spaces, but as we've cut it for multiple residents only, hopefully it'll be a much more enjoyable experience. Uh, also, as Christine said earlier, we did decide that it really is not ready yet for a big event. Uh, the grass is coming in. We pray for rain. I rain dance. That's why it rained this weekend. I know it ruined everyone's weekend, but I was doing the, the rain dance because we needed it because we had the hydro seed out and we were watering best we could, but now the grass is taken. Uh, the trees are being soaked. So, um, again, Let's keep praying for rain and keep that thing turned green. Um, Dave, I saw the cement kind of walkway. Are we going to make another connection to make that handicap ramp go all the way down? Correct. So at the end of the concrete, we have a, a blue mat. So from the end of that, the mat goes 50 feet and goes right into the water. And we have a, a wheelchair with oversized uh, bubble wheels. So you'll be able to uh, go from your own wheelchair into that wheelchair and wheel right into it. It's not going to be concrete. It'll be a mat heavy-duty rubber mat that will be anchored and it will be put in once we get to the uh, point where the beach is uh, open with the lifeguards. And that will be rolled out and that will stay there for the, uh, for the summer months. So it's going to be neat. It's going to be something that uh, hopefully uh, people with disabilities will be able to use. It will be, you know, again, us taking the lead uh, for, with, with people with disabilities. So I'm really excited about that. And, and, it's just something. and we do have a gatehouse. But what's that building there? Well, we have a gatehouse now, so we don't have, you know, so it's a different way of doing business now. So we are trying to control traffic in and out. Uh, so we do want to say that once the parking lot does fill up, it is going to be a problem because there really is no on-street parking. So uh, we do people uh, get there early if they're planning on getting there on Saturday or Sunday. Okay, moving on to the old town road upgrades. That money, again, was for Bryant Road and some miscellaneous landscaping on Pine Street. Um, that's not Pine Street, Pine Street. Uh, again, the recreational docks, this is the money we talked about that was uh, kind of uh, parlayed with the, uh, the money this year. And the electrical generation building study, um, that is underway. We haven't covered it, and Bergeron has done some of the work, and they are now scheduling a site visit to do, because they're also working on the Abenaki rope tow, uh, so they're trying to do a two-for-one. They're going to be scheduling a, a meeting and an on-site to do their uh, inspections and testing at the MED building. So that project is a little slow, but we should have some results later on this summer. And the last one on the list, but not but by any means the least, is the Pleasant Valley Road Bridge which uh, we really uh, done a heck of a job. This one was uh, one that uh, had slipped. We were able to jump into the bridge program. We got 80% funding. Uh, the estimate at 1.2 million, uh, the project really came in almost 200,000 under budget, which is great. Um, and uh, the bridge is beautiful. I think uh, we've done meet all our commitments uh, with regards to um, trying to protect the environment. 
uh, create a stormwater or a treatment system there. And um, right now, we're just working on the final uh, reimbursement to get all the money back. So we will be getting uh, almost $800,000 uh, reimbursement on that project. So again, that's a nice one, a beautiful project. So with that, I would take any other questions you might have for Public Works or Water Source. Thank you very much. I'm glad to have that update. Now, when people ask us where the road projects are, we have something to go to to answer them correctly. Yeah, and I'll try to get that posted on the web page, too. So this report should be posted on the web page. And if anyone has any questions, always can call the office. We'll be happy to work. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. All righty. Um, next item is the 2021 bond issue for the electric conversion, which is 1.8. Five million, and then the dock repairs, which are eighty-five thousand, hundred thousand. I'll yeah. So uh, Casey's on vacation. Um, we we've got the bond documents already for um, board signature this evening. Um, we've gone through all of the work to um, secure the bond. Uh, the bond will go. Uh, in front of the bond bank, I believe it's the 16th of this month. Um, it, right now, we're looking at a, a possible or a maximum um, interest rate of 2.5, 2.25%. Um, it could be lower than that once it's said and done. Uh, we did secure the 10-year note, um, and the only other thing is once um, you read the resolution and you make the motion to accept it um, this evening there'll actually be a whole series of different documents that you'll need to sign um, in fact i think there's eight signatures that you'll have to do for this um, bond uh, so with that said uh, i can answer any questions that you may have you're supposed to read a resolution yeah, so uh, it's actually fairly lengthy. Yeah, it's my understanding that this whole resolution has That's to be read into the record. All the way down to here. Yep. Okay, here we go. See how many things I can misread. <laughs> Uh, resolved that under and pursuant to the Municipal Finance Act, Chapter 33, NHRSA, as amended, the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank Law, Chapter 35-A, NHRSA, as amended, and other laws in addition thereto, and to vote, and to the votes of the issuer duly adopted on March 9, 2021, under Article 7 and 9 of the warrant for such annual meeting of the issuer there be and thereby is authorized the issuance of 2,700,000 bonds of insurer, the bond in parenthesis, which is being issued by the issuer to, the finan to finance one construction and conversion of the distribution system voltage for, from 4 kV to 12.47 KV on North Main Street from Forest North to the end of the Circuit 2-1, 1,850,000 $1, and two, reconstructing and upgrading of the Wolfboro Bay Recreational Finger Docks B, C, D, E, F, and G, $850,000. The bond shall be dated as of it, its date of issuance, shall be in such numbers and denominations as the purchaser shall request, shall mature in accordance with the schedule set forth in Exhibit A, and to a certain loan agreement thereafter describe the loan agreement, shall bear a net interest rate as defined in the loan agreement of two and one quarter percent 2.25 per d annuum or such lesser amounts as may be determined by the majority of the board. The bond shall be substantially informed set forth as Exhibit B to the loan agreement and otherwise shall be issued in such manner and form as the signatory shall approve by their action 
execution thereof. Resolved that the bond shall be sold to the bond bank at the par value thereof plus any applicable premiums. That in order to evidence the sale of the bond, the treasurer of the issuer and the members of the board are authorized and directed to execute, attest, and deliver in the name and on behalf of the issuer a loan agreement in substantially the form submitted to this meeting, which is thereby approved with such changes therein not inconsistent with this vote and approved by the officers executing the same on behalf of the issuer. The approval of such change by said officers shall be conclusively evident of the execution of the loan agreement by such officers. Resolved that all things theretofore done and all action let me read that again. That all things heretofore done and all actions heretofore taken by the issuer and its officers and agents in its authorization of the project to be financed by the bond are hereby ratified, approved, and confirmed. Resolved that the clerk and the signers of the bond are each hereby authorized to take any and all actions necessary and convenient to carry out the provisions of this vote, including delivering the bond against the payment, therefore, that the useful life of the project being financed is in excess of 10 years. I further certify that said meeting was open to the public and for said vote was not taken by secret ballot nor in execute executive session that the votes were taken by roll call if the meeting was held remotely or virtually and in accordance with the governor's order 12 that the notice of the time and place of said meeting was posted in at least two appropriate public places within the territorial limits of the issuer or published in a newspaper of general circulation in said area at least 24 hours, excluding Sunday and legal holiday, therefore said meeting, and that no deliberation or action with respect to the votes were taken in executive session, and that the minutes of, of said meeting have been properly recorded and have been or will be made open to inspection within 144 hours of said meeting, all in accordance with Chapter 91-A and HRSA as amended. I further, further certify that the above vote has, been, has not been amended or rescinded and remains in full force and effectiveness as of this date. And so I, I guess, make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, from that point, you, you, you've read that into the record. We need we need a motion on um, the language in uh, red of the agenda. It's the one in red. Yes. Somebody want to make the motion in red? Yeah, I'll move that the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to authorize the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen Chairman, Town Treasurer, Town Clerk to sign the general obligation bond in the amount of $2,700,000 for the electric conversion project and dock repairs. So that's Dave second. Senecal, do I have a second? Second. That's Brad. Brad? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda? Yes. Luke? I would abstain from this one. Okay. One abstention. And Brian? Yes. Set. Does that do it? We're good. Okay. We'll just have to sign it tonight and we'll, we'll get it to the bond bank and they'll get it completed. Okay. And the money will be, um, I believe, the first week of August, the money will be transferred to the town. Okay. Very good. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Beach Forum timeline. Um, Amy and I went down um, today with Tim from Community Television and looked at the pavilion. 
Um, he will be able to broadcast from the pavilion. He'll have one line that he will broadcast from. It will go to the uh, station and then it will have to go out. He said it may be a minute or two delay. Um, we have a plug in the, in the um, pavilion where we can put the, um, uh, the lectern with a speaker. We're going to have another uh, speaker or microphone. What? Uh, at the Board of Selectmen table, we'll be looking towards Laner Street. The public will bring their chairs, and we're just going to ask for public input. And nothing else, no presentation or anything, but just it is for the public. Uh, we talked about whether we would, could bring it up here, but we just felt out there we could have any number of people. There would be no um, number problems. So if that sounds fine with the board, we'll keep on moving forward with that. Um, we'll start getting some advertising out. We'll add it to the agenda each um, meeting so that we keep on reminding um, the public about it. We will get it onto our website. So does anybody else have any questions about that? All righty. Other business, um, I have one thing. Um, Taxpayers all should have received the brochure on, um, from the Wolfboro Waters Committee um, suggesting ways that you may help with runoff um, on your own property and um, some more information. I just want to point out that that brochure was paid for uh, out of the executive um, budget. Um, on the line that was for Wolfboro Waters. It was pre-budgeted and um, that's where the finance came. And it went to all property owners. If you are a renter, you did not get one. If you would like one, there should be copies here at the town hall. Um, and if you don't have mine, we'll get them to you. Does anybody else have any other business? Linda. Okay. Linda. Yeah. Yes. Um, it came to my attention this week that there is a um, business in town that is planning fireworks for the 2nd of July by barge in the Wolfboro Bay area. I talked to um, the gentleman and um, asked him if there was anything that potentially the town could do to help. And um, he and I speaking, he thought that it would be nice if the fireworks could actually be on the 3rd. But um, the fireworks company he's using doesn't have the availability for a barge. Um, I thought of an, a potential option would be to use Brewster's Field the way we have in the past if we can get permission from them. Um, the fireworks company said that they might have a technician, just a might, for the 3rd. Um, and we could then move it to the Saturday night, which would be a nice night to have the fireworks. And the um, gentleman who's having the fireworks currently said he would um, thoroughly enjoy the town participating in the expense and putting on the largest fireworks display that Wolfboro has ever seen. <laughs> um, so this is all speculative based on what the fireworks company can do. However, I would still put forward that um, because we have a budget for the fireworks, um, and he agreed that he wouldn't mind us helping him with the expense even on the second that night, um, if it was still on the barge, he has room to add more money to the display. We could help with his cost. And again, even if it's on the Friday night, have the biggest fireworks display that Wolfboro has ever had. Um, so it's something that I w w wanted to bring to the board and see if the board would consider uh, any of this and if they would want to talk about it and maybe go forward. Okay. Um, I guess the first thing was if Brewster was willing to um, let us use their campus would the Board of Selectmen support taking our money and combining it with the um, business's money to put on fireworks? Hmm. 
I guess I'd like to think about that a little bit. Can we think about it to the next meeting? I mean, it's already happening. He's already going to do it. Yeah. So regard, you know, uh, you just approved, I guess. So uh, we could think about it. We could, yeah. you know. Um, and then there is, are we, that was the one, uh, if it could be go off of Brewster. Yep. On the third. Yeah. If that can't happen, then we have the other issue on off the barge on the second, which is already going. Do we want to add some more money to it? And those are the two things we're thinking about. Everybody yep. agree? Does anybody else have any other comment or immediate feeling on it? Jim, is, do you think there would be any issue for us to put it on the barge with a private business? Uh, I, I don't think there would be a, a lot of issue. Uh, I did um, make contact with the acting fire chief and the police chief today. They are here this evening if you have any questions for them. They didn't um, see any issues really relative to it. I just don't know if, if we put it off too long how much time that company is going to need to be able to make that decision and ensure that they've got the, the product to do it. Um, would the chiefs like to say anything relative to it? Thank you. Tom Zotti, acting fire chief. Um, personally, professionally, I don't have a particular preference based on what you talked about, but what I would like you to consider is changing the date Um, not immediately. Uh, I'll have to backtrack to make a lot of sense. There's a lot of logistics that go into this behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Changing the date makes it even more difficult for us to staff this. When I say us, I mean fire rescue. Mm -hmm. We don't staff it, they don't shoot. We've already asked our members to give up most of their 4th of July. We're a month out. If we stick with it, I have not asked for staffing yet for the July 2nd because we just finalized that this morning. Um, and then when this came up, I, I didn't want to start that process. But I, I'd really ask you to consider not letting a lot of time go by before a final decision on at least a date is made. Once you, if you choose to make it a bigger display on, on a given date, that we're already there. Yep. That's not an issue. Um, I just anticipate the longer it takes to finalize the date, the harder it's going to be to find people on a holiday weekend when we've already asked them to give up part of it for the parade to staff that as well. Um, and I just throw that out there for your consideration. We, um, we, sh we should have um, notification by the fireworks company by tomorrow okay. Okay. Um, or at the latest on Friday whether or not they have a technician that would be available um, to go off land. If so, then it's up to the other business owner if that's the route he chooses. And he seemed very amicable about it. Um, and he wants to partner with the town. Uh, I think his exact words to me was a thousand percent. And um, he's like, let's, let's, let's end this pandemic with the biggest darn fireworks that Wolfboro has ever seen. I would point out that when the July 2nd permit came to me last Friday, one of my first phone calls was to a representative of Brewster to find out if campus was going to be open or not. Yeah. He was pretty sh adamant that it was still going to be closed, so I think you need to resolve that. Yeah. It, my issue was where were they going to load the barge, and that, that yeah. again, is a logistical thing we work through, and, and so be it. Um, and I believe they're in the process of making arrangements, uh, they may have contacted the town manager that looking at the Libby dock. Um, and we can work through that, it's just that was my question, yeah. but the answer I got was no, campus is still going to be closed, so that may be an issue you need to okay. resolve as well. I, I think I can say with, at this point that the, the campus is an option, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, Brewster is is willing to work with us, um, but it's not concrete yet. Um, so it is an option, and I'll yep. leave it at that. And the third is not concrete yet, again. But even if we can't move it to shore and on the third, I would think that it would be a big, big gesture by 
um, this board to partner with this individual on the second and show that we're having a parade, we're having fireworks, we're trying to make something, you know, some normalcy back into our community. Go ahead. Sorry, he just Hi, asked Chief, me a question. Chief Rondo, Chief, Chief of Police. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I think I missed it. What was the, I agree with uh, Chief Saudi. What was the reason for moving it, wanting to move it to the third? Um, it was actually, I talked to the gentleman who's, the, the business owner who's, who's doing it. He chose the Friday because he had to by default. It was all that was available for him. And when I said, well, um, I talked to, I, by just luck, I called the same company because I was looking to see if there were any firework companies around that had anything available for the weekend, just to, as an option. And, um, he said to me, oh, this gentleman already has one for Wolfboro. You're looking for the third or the fourth. You already got one on the second. And I said to them, well, is there any way we could move it to the third? They said, well, let me see if we have another barge. So when they gave me that information, I called the business owner and said, hey, um, I just found out that you're having fireworks. This was last week. And, um, but you're having on Friday night, talking to the company, they said that there could be a possibility on Saturday, and he said, I would love that. He got the Friday night by default because that's all that was available. Well, yeah, but what's all that was available for a barge? For a barge. But... Don't, don't we have a barge to, to shoot them off of on the second? Yeah, but that's only for the they second, did, yeah. not for the third. Yeah, so I guess what? Why are we? Why do we just? Not, I'm okay. I'm, you do want to fly by? Why yeah. do we want to move it to the third? What's the advantage? To he to wanted him on the third to start with. He wanted him on the third because why? To start with, because he thought the Saturday night would be a, a much better night for fireworks than on a Friday night. But we we don't have a barge for Saturday night, or well, we do? We don't. It, it's all based on what the fireworks company. Who's on first? Yeah. It's all based on what the fireworks company has available. All their barges were booked for for Saturday night and Sunday night. So this 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 business owner said, "Okay, what do you have available for me?" Aren't we good for the second? That we, we that business owner second. is good for the the business owner is good for the second. Correct. All right. It's, it's on the second, right? Yes, that's Friday night. That is what he has, and that's gone because through. Because that's what we're planning on. So why, I guess the question is, why do we want to move it to the third? What's the advantage? I think what they're saying, I think what Brian is saying, that Saturday night there'll be more people in town, he believes, oh, than okay. on Friday night. I, I think. Yeah, yeah. The, the, like I said, the business owner wanted it on a Saturday, and he, and he couldn't get it because he um, only had a barge available for Friday. Now, if Brewster does allow us to shoot from the shore, there's a potential that we could have it on Saturday instead. I think we've got to pick a date real quick and make sure we got That's what I want to do by tomorrow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, let me ask Tom, will there be a new permit that needs to yes. be happen? Yes. To, so what we're all there, it, we're going to have this whole thing get, okay. Yeah, so, so let me just real quick, the chief is right. The permitting process is, uh, this is, uh, it's a process, right? And we need to pick a date, we need to stick with it because there's a lot, that, there are a lot of moving parts and the chief is right about scheduling resources and everything else and personnel. So, um, yeah, I'm in, I'm actually in favor of, uh, I signed Nate Truen's, uh permit. I think it's a good idea. I don't think the same changes exist now that existed several months ago. We're moving in the right direction. I believe that the governor is probably going to let the emergency order expire. At least that's my, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, that'll happen on the 14th, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the danger is greatly mitigated. I, I think we still have to be <clears throat> careful about mm -hmm. what we do moving forward with COVID-19, so forth and so on. But um, I, I uh, relative to the third or the, or the, the second or whatever, whatever day, we, we, there will be a new permit. We'll have to do that. I'll, I'll approve it. I, I don't have any issues with that. We will, there is no traffic plan. So I will have to bring on just about my entire PD. So it's gonna be very expensive for us to do this. Um, that being said, um, we'll move forward. Um, I certainly have no issues with it. 
So you have no plan to do anything for the second one, a private business is putting a uh, display on, the police is not going to have a special group so, for that which we now know is going on. Yeah, so regardless of what day we do this, the second or the third, um, there will be, uh, I will have to bring just about the entire PD on. Um, with that being said, that'll be, you know, for, for most officers, that'll probably be some sort of overtime status. Um, that's fine. The, uh, I, I suspect that, that uh, Brian is correct, that there'll be more people in town Saturday night, which means that the, the traffic flow will be heavier, all right? So that means much more traffic congestion. We'll, we'll deal with it. Um, we always do. Uh, Friday is obviously easier for us. Saturday is more difficult. Okay. One other question. Now, they, is the permit to set the fireworks off the barge, does it matter whether it's a smaller or larger number of... I'm, I'm not seeing anything. It does. I'm, 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 my, my instinct tells me that it can be amended okay. one way or the other. Um, it may, you know, could rise to the level of them requiring another uh, attendant with the fireworks company or something like that. Um, I'm not familiar with what the filing fees may be with the state fire marshal's office for that permit, but I suspect it can be amended and we don't have to obviously sign off on it again. Okay. Um, but, I, you know, I go back to what the chief said, and it's, it's true, there's a bunch of moving parts. So if, if there's a way to make this work um, fairly soon, if the answer is going to be tomorrow, yep. I mean, we can, we can work with that. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to avoid getting three weeks, two weeks out and still having to scramble to find people because we, we are required both by administrative rule and by the conditions of the permit to have personnel on site from the time the fireworks arrive to the time they're loaded and to the time they clean up afterwards. So we, we need to, you know, start those wheels turning fairly quickly. Dave. I guess it doesn't matter to me whether it's the second or the third. It doesn't matter to me. I think the question might be is, are we going to take a budgeted amount of money for patriotic purposes and use it to help subsidize the fireworks. Is that what I understand? Is that what he wants? It would be a it would be a joint fireworks display with the town of Wolfboro and this right. business owner. So I guess that if that's the case, and I think I can make a decision right now, one way or the other, the fireworks are going to happen. So I think that it uh, if they're going to happen, I think that we should participate in it as far as a town, as far as money, whether we subsidize the amount of money we have or a portion of it. I guess that's the decision that we have to make as a board. We have the money in the budget, it's there. So whether we subsidize that whole amount towards the fireworks or whether we pick a number, 50% of it, half of it, and put it towards the fireworks on top of what this gentleman's going to put out. Uh, obviously, if we put the whole thing in, that's a lot of fireworks. I like fireworks. The, um, <laughs> the, so, all yeah. night. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with us taking the, the line, the patriotic purpose line, and utilizing it with him as far as putting stuff on the barge. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. Brad? Yeah. Um, I agree with Dave. I think I'd like to see us participate in this in a joint effort with uh, uh, with the private uh, person here. Regarding the night and Brewster Academy being a maybe and stuff, you know, I think the permit's already gone in, and I'd really lean towards uh, keeping it on the Friday night on the barge. It's already set up that way. Yeah. Why take a chance on changing a venue around and possibly having something change? Um, on, on, on Brewster's end or something like that, if all of a sudden something comes up, they decide, well, you know, we might not want to have it on campus now, whatever. If we have a locked in date, time and everything there, I think we should go with that. So that's the way I would lean right now. 
Luke? Uh, and I have no, no stake in this uh, whatsoever, not even the barge. But uh, I w it, it is, I, th I agree with the barge, uh, strictly from my knowledge, it's uh, regardless, we can keep Brewster campus closed potentially if, it, if they want to be uh, and keep people off that area. And I, I think the barge is a very safe uh, way to do this. So that's, I I'm good with that. Okay, I'll go to Brian, then I'll come back to me. So talking to the fireworks company, what they said was a barge can hold $15,000 worth of fireworks. Um, they, it's all set up so they have the right people, the right technicians on it, that's made with racks and the whole bit and everything. Right now, um, the, the business owner in town has paid a substantial portion of that. He wouldn't mind us just paying the rest to get up to there or splitting the cost even with, with us. So our biggest outlay would be um, $7,500. Um, he did like the idea of the town going with him. He actually said 1,000%. He said, just don't forget about me because I got the ball rolling. And I said, absolutely, you will get your, due, your, your credit. Um, he also said that, um, again, and this is what he said when I said, Friday night, did you try Saturday? He goes, I would have loved Saturday night, just wasn't available. So I think if um, Brewster gives us the option, I think we should just listen to it and think about it, and then decide, do we want to move it to the, to the third and allow it to happen, or just keep it the way it is? I'm fine with either one. I don't mind. Yeah. But he's done a lot of work, and he's got the ball started for us, and I think we should help him in a system in any way we can. Um, I believe that we should keep it on the Friday night. We've got no. everything in place. We can decide that tonight. They can staff it. Um, and it doesn't put an extra burden on our two departments. I have, and I believe if I'm correct, it's 13,000 we have in the budget mm -hmm. for the fireworks. I'm comfortable. Um, paying is up to that to support it and that we give him the PR and that uh, it would be lovely to have a great fireworks display even on Friday. You know, we were forced to make this decision at the end of March and there was no question at that point with what was going on we couldn't, but now is the time to celebrate, and so I'm really, that's where I, I would like us to go. I don't want to keep this going and not get it done and start PRing it and talk about our partnership and get out thank yous to the business for, for having this in place and for us to be able to join them. Yeah. Um, Jim. Talk, talking to the um, fireworks companies, they said that we could have booked this in advance and depending on the company, a lot of them let you, you let you keep it booked until as late as the middle of May or the end of May, and then you could have canceled at that time. That's fine, but we had a contract that yeah. we had to end by that point. Correct. I understand. You know, we can look at doing another one another year, but that was where it yeah. is. But I just, I just implore that the board give me two days before we decide if it's definitely on the second or on the third just two days so that we can ask this gentleman who started this for us, who we wouldn't be having a fireworks display without, and give him the opportunity if he wants to have it on the third also. He may say, no, I'm going to stay with the second, that's okay. But I think he's entitled to that short period of time. Did, did you make a motion? No, I just, we're still in discussion. I want to make sure that everybody says their piece. Because I was going to second it. Oh, <laughs> I still want to see if it's if Brad's with it, and and we're yeah. now talking about whether we're going to hold to the second, or whether we want to move and hold out to the third, and then you can uh, make your motion, or you can make your motion. I'll, and I'll make a motion that we take our patriotic purpose funding in our budget and put it towards fireworks to be uh, on July second. I'll second that. Any further? Any and that's approximately thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. called fireworks under yeah. Patriot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any board member have any other discussion? Any other points? All righty. 
I'll call. Um, so we had Dave, who made the motion. I seconded it. Brian? So my question is, if I, if I would like to leave it open for future discussion no. for the third, vote no. Then I'm going to vote no. Okay. So you're no. No. Luke? Yes. I'm yes. 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 Okay. So it's going to be on the second, four to one. Um, and Brian, are you willing to go back and, and get the specifics worked out, yep. get it in writing, mm -hmm. and send it to the town manager? We're going to meet on the 9th. We are. And that document we should vote mm -hmm. and approve and get the word out. Okay? I hope he isn't upset because well, he's the guy that's taking care of it for us. He, he, can, he already is putting it out that he's going to do it on the second. Yep. What I see us doing is, is helping him pay tremendously for something wonderful that he did, mm -hmm. and that's what we should do. Um, and I think it's right not trying to switch it to Bruce or anything else. I think let's get okay. going here. Chief, does that work for you guys? Works perfect, yeah. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other business? We all set with that? Okay. We need to do committee reports, and I'll start with Brad. Yeah. This past couple of weeks, the only one I've had is a planning board meeting last night. Um, fairly quiet, uneventful meeting. So it was. Uh, we actually got out early too. So it was good. Good. Dave. Yeah, I've had none. I missed one. Okay. Um, Luke. Nothing to report tonight. Brian? Um, I had an energy committee meeting on the 21st, and we're working diligently for um, getting an EFI charger installed um, behind the train museum building. Um, had a great meeting today with um, Dave Ford and Barry Mucci, uh, Muccio and Jim and two other members of the Energy Committee, um, and things are moving forward. Um, I had a Cable Franchise Committee meeting, and um, we started um, talking about the potential need for competition in the town, and um, that potentially 5G could replace cable and other means of, of internet connection in the town coming down the road. Okay. Um, I had a meeting uh, last night, Wolfboro, um, and we are working on how we will fundraise for uh, the fireworks uh, on December 31st. Um, the budget committee did put $2,500 in the budget, and last night, Wolfboro made the commitment to raise the other 2500 from the community. So anybody wants to send us money, we're open to receive it. <laughs> um, I had a meeting with the Friends of Pop Whalen. Uh, Jim joined me. Um, we did, had conversations about how the two groups um, are going to work together. Jim worked with and had a conversation with the architectural firm um, that it, we have hired. Uh, to do the cost estimate, and um, I think that went well. Um, I had a meeting with the chairman of the Budget Committee, Police Commission, Jim and myself. We reviewed the 2021 budget and talked about the way to head forward in the 2022 budget, and that was, I felt, a very good meeting, um, and everybody, I think, was pleased. The DOC committee did meet. Um, we um, are working, the DOC committee um, would like to have um, the drainage systems down at the dockside parking lot um, reviewed, get a calculation of the water and the runoff that we're getting. It's happening down there from the abutter building, the abutting buildings and properties. Uh, the town, they asked the town to quantify the amount of water in that parking lot area and how much drainage would be needed as backup to hiring a uh, consultant 
to provide at least two option plans to address the drainage needs in this area, and the committee would like to be included in the analysis of possible options. There's a very strong feeling in that committee that they want to support Wolfboro Waters and addressing the water that comes and drainage of that area. And we're meeting again in July, um, and that committee um, will look at what uh, Dave Ford was talking about, how, what was going to happen in the parking lot and the benches. And I told you before I, I met at Foss Field uh, with Amy. We also, Amy and I, walked down to the town docks to look at the signage. Now that we have four vessels coming in there, we have the Mount Washington, we have the Millie B, the Winnipesaukee Bell, and now these two others. So we were trying to get a see how the signs could be uh, placed there. And she's working with those uh, groups. That's all I have. Um, town manager, your report. A uh, few items. Um, first of all, we're in receipt of a uh, letter um, about McKinney Park, you may recall. Uh, a couple years ago, we, we discussed McKinney Park and we put signage up um, that says any commercial dive classes need to come in front of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I think we need to revisit that, so just be aware that in the next packet, um, this will come up as an item to be discussed. Um, a couple of items going forward, as Brian mentioned, we had a cable franchise committee meeting. We've got another cable franchise committee meeting scheduled um, June 7th, and that's to prepare for the public hearing, which is going to be on June 9th um, at 6.30, uh, right here in the Great Hall, and it will also um, be done in a virtual format. Uh, with that said, as the Chief alluded to earlier, it sounds like the emergency order um, from the Governor um, may be expiring. Uh, if that does expire, um, that means that um, virtual meetings will come to an end. Um, so this point, or, or from June 12th going forward, we need to prepare for all um, meetings being in person and no more virtual. Uh, roofs to, repairs to the town hall roof, those are scheduled for June 7th and 8th. They've finally received the, the materials and they'll be here to take care of that. Um, currently working as well with Brewster Academy regarding an updated lease of Brewster Beach. Uh, so that information will be coming forward to you in the future. Um, last two items, I'll, I'll just read as statements. Um, the town of Wolfboro is in receipt of a request to have the farmer's market moved. We are hopeful that the market will be able to remain at Clark Park through the 2021 season. On the, the second item is on May 27, 2021, a gentleman lawfully entered town hall filming employees. I am aware that the resulting video has been posted on social media and I've had a telephone conversation with the gentleman conducting what's called the First Amendment audit. Uh, should there be any questions from the public about this, uh, they should direct those questions to me. Uh, Madam Chairperson, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from the press? Melissa? I don't have any questions at this time, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is a time for public input. Three minutes per person, no more than 15 minutes. Do we have anybody in the audience who would like to give us public input at this time? Seeing and hearing none, we'll move on. Um, I need a motion to go into non-public session. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, so the motion was made by Dave, seconded by Luke. Brad? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda? Yes. Luke? Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay. We're moving into non-public.